it's, it's 75 hours of really like, you know, you don't, your creature comforts are gone. You have to like be who you are because all that stuff, you don't have time to, to worry about any of anything else other than you and what you can bring to the table, especially in that team environment. Like I might be really good at A, B, and C, but suck at D and F, mm-hmm. whatever those things are. And you're like, oh, my buddy over here is really good at D and E. And my other buddy over here is really good at F. And together we're a full fucking alphabet. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not the full alphabet. That's awesome. <laughs> and the only way that, you know, we're going to get through this is for us all to realize what we're good at and what we're not good at. And let's work together to up level everything. <laughs> Hey, what's up? I'm Steve Eckert, United States Marine, entrepreneur and instructor for the project. I want to introduce a very special guest today, a graduate of class 005 of the project, Todd Telkamp. Thanks for coming. Awesome to see you. Thanks for coming by. So, Todd, this show, as you know, you just graduated the project. This, This show and this channel is for men in search of meaningful transformations in what we call the four F bombs, the family, the fitness, the finances, and the faith. And this occurs through through sacrifice and hardship, physically, mentally, and emotionally, so that you can become a better man, a better husband, a better father, a better leader, a better entrepreneur, and just a better human in general. So Todd, thank you for joining us. Can you just introduce yourself to the audience of where you're from, what you do, and just the whole situation with your family? Yeah. So Todd Telkamp, I'm from Seattle, originally from Texas, but I've been in Seattle for about 20 years. Um, I'm a director for a telecom services company. I run a crew of about 20, 25 people up there and uh, divorced and uh, excited to be here today. That's a big switch from Texas to, to Seattle. That's yeah. a big switch. Yeah. Awesome stuff. So let's, let's just jump right into it. Sure. When you, when you first f- heard about the project, you might have saw some videos, some mm-hmm. stuff online. What was it that just grabbed you that said, that I need to be a part of this right now at this point in my life? What was that really resonated with you? Well, I, I'd done a lot of, you know, different challenging stuff, whether it was, you know, Spartan type stuff or some other, you know, kind of pseudo seal training, you know, um, uh, you know, private sector type stuff mm-hmm. and uh, really started getting a feel for like the kind of benefit that that could give me in my life by, you know, just the extra challenge and working in a small team, that kind of stuff. Um, and the last event that I did um, really gave me a lot of confidence of like the kind of things I could do with my life and the kind of person I can be um, through these kinds of challenges. But I wasn't really satisfied. I didn't feel like the first long event that I had done, um, I got through it, achieved my goal of completing it. But I felt like I held back a little bit because I didn't know how to pace myself or whatever it was about. Um, and then when the opportunity for the project came to, came to me through social media, probably, mm. um, I was pretty much 99% in already. I had followed Ray Care um, through some different things that he had done. So I was aware of him um, and I was just really drawn to participate. So um, that was that was kind of how I got exposed to it and why I got drawn to it. So, awesome. Yeah. On a deeper level than that, what was what were some of the struggles you were going through? What areas of life do you feel like you needed to just unfuck yourself? And what, yeah. what were some of the things you were looking to achieve mm-hmm. out of this, like specifically? Yeah. So I think um, I think as we talked about during the project that you know I probably spent a lot of my earlier life kind of living to make other people happy, whether it's my parents or my family or you know my friends or my girlfriend or my wife mm-hmm. or whatever it was. And my whole existence is about just kind of working hard and trying to make other people happy and what was important to me and who I was kind of got lost in the process and got buried. Um, and through difficult training, whether it's CrossFit or SEAL type training or whatever it might be, all that stuff just has to go away. You don't have time for, you know, how do I look and how am I showing up and am I doing the right thing or am I doing the wrong thing to make this person happy? It's like, you have to, all you have left is you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, uh, and that really kind of gave me a window into how to connect with my best self and how to foster that and practice that and bring that out into the world. So, And that's an awesome point. It sounds like you went years or maybe decades sure. with never putting yourself first, putting other people before yourself, never really focusing on yourself. So when was, the, when was the last time, and probably some, some men out there can relate to this, that you actually can take four days, block out the outside world, block out all the bullshit and the distractions yeah. and the drama and, and riots and, and protests and elections, and four days straight, just focus on just yourself, just the, silence all the noise and just as hectic and crazy as it is, it's, yeah. it's a stillness to that. There's a, there's a silence and a peacefulness to that, yeah. to be able to focus on that. Was that one of the first times you were ever able to really do that? Um, it was maybe, maybe not the first time, but it was definitely like, you know, um, the longest amount of time that I mm-hmm. blocked out for that probably. Um, but I'd had, you know, I mean, you can have an intense five minute workout and have a taste of what that experience right, is right. like, right? When 
because really what it is, it's about for me is about just being present. And there's a magic to life in being present. No worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. No, you know, bringing in what happened yesterday or 10 years ago. It's just right now, what do I have to do? I have to breathe. I have to support. I have to smile. I have to work my butt off. And that's what, to me, the project was all about was just giving that container where I have to practice those things. You know, I can't be worrying about how much longer are we here? Oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm dying right now. You know, how am I going to ever survive another 74 hours of this? You can't think about any of that stuff. All you can think about is what do I have to do right now? I have to breathe. I have to work my butt off and I have to look out and see how I can support my team. Because it's like, you can't, you, you can't be a leader to someone else. You learn how to lead yourself and take care of yourself. And 100%. I like to tell people all the time, you, you are your most important client. You could have high level clients all over the place, yeah. but you can't support them. You can't give them the service that they need and deserve until you get your own shit in order first. And, and take care of yourself first. Yeah, it's like on the airplane, right? When they when the the gas mask comes yeah. out, not the gas mask, whatever the fuck it's called, <laughs> oxygen. We're ready usually. for war. We're ready for fucking war. It's the gas mask comes down on the plane. And they tell you if it gets full of gas, you put your gas mask on, even before your own children, because yeah. you're useless to them. Yeah, if you're not taking that time to block out for yourself and invest in yourself. Mm -hmm mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially yeah. in yourself. Yeah, 100%. You know? and, that, and that's a great awareness of yourself because men out there will, and I hear it every day, they'll invest in upgrading their homes, spending tens of thousands of dollars to upgrade their home, yeah. to pay their car payment, to get stupid shit they don't need, but they're fucking miserable, yeah. right? Because they're not putting themselves first. They're yeah. covering it up with band-aids and it's not, it's not going to help yeah. out. So that's, that's awesome and, and great awareness on your part. So that leads us... So the, the next thing, what were some of the hesitations you had? Once you, you know, you realize, all right, this is something I definitely need to be a part of. Mm -hmm. You said you were already pretty much all in for it because you're, yeah. you're an intense dude. You were yeah. probably, you were, I know I understand you were just like, fuck yeah, I need to do this. Mm -hmm. What were some of the things, maybe the hesitations or doubts you had about, yeah. about getting started? Yeah, so I'd done, you know, a little bit of research and I did my sales or, you know, call with Aaron. And, uh, you know, he kind of gave me the basic rundown of how it works and what it's all about. And the only real question I have, and just from my experience, I know that for me, at about 48 to 55 hours, I start going a little nutty without sleep, <laughs> just whether it's work or right. just stuff. Um, and you know, I can, I know I can go anywhere and get the crap kicked out of me for three or four days, whatever, but that wasn't what I was looking for. I was looking for the growth and mm -hmm. the hard work and that whole sick cycle of events, right. Of reflection and recovery and then getting back after it. And so my only question for Aaron, after he went through the whole, you know, kind of introduction with me is, is there sleep involved? You don't need to tell me how many hours or am I going to get a pillow or anything like that? I'm like, is there sleep involved? And when he said, yes, there's sleep involved, I'm like, that's all I need to know. I'm like, where do I sign? Let's go. Because that, that sleep that, could mean 10 minutes. It could mean yeah. 10 hours. We're not going to say how much sleep is involved, sure. but you will get enough sleep to be effective enough to retain the information, to have those aha moments, to mm -hmm. be able to reflect. You'll get enough to get the job done. That's what, that's what we'll say. Yeah. So, yeah. And that was your biggest concern was, was that? That was pretty much it. And, and I mean, really, that was, it was more of, a, of an alignment test. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, are these guys, it looks like something that I'm aligned with, but you know, is this going to be just like, they're going to kick the crap out of me to like bang their chest and be like, Oh, look how badass we are. Cause we can kick the crap out of you. I'm like that. I might've been drawn to that, but that really wasn't what I wanted at the time. Um, and so just the fact that, you know, that was an element, the, the recovery, the reflection and getting back after it. I'm like, that's really what I wanted. And then that, off, alone, is, the that alone is just would be fucking useless, right? Just to of course, you are going to be challenged extremely physically, Absolutely. but when it comes down to it, the physical part, you probably, as you noticed, was the easiest part, right, to deal with. It's just physical. What, yeah. It's just physical. That's mm -hmm. it. You either could do it or you can't, but yeah. the mental and emotional part, yeah. those are the parts where you have to have those deep reflection and, and more struggle and Definitely. more adversity in those areas. So Definitely. That, that's, that's some good stuff. Yeah. So let me ask you, what was, it, it, it sounds like this was right up your alley, really. You were, you were meant to be part of the project and meant to be part of this yeah, brotherhood, and sure. um, I, appreciate, you know, I appreciate all your... You know, I appreciate knowing you and, and you being part of it. So yeah. that, that's the first thing. What was one of your favorite either evolutions or events or experiences or tasks that you had to do during the 75 hour experience? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, in looking back at it and even in real time, there wasn't really, uh, I, I, there was no judgment for me. <laughs> you know, I, I think as after I signed up, I probably wrote it on my mirror in my bathroom, like just finish the project. Like that was the goal. Right. And it wasn't like I didn't go through it. Again, it's about being present and non-judgmental because I was just like, it, it's all going to suck, you know, and what can I get out of this? Mm -hmm. How can I be practice being present and supportive and positive? And, uh, and, and honestly, like the more it sucks and the more I might not like it, the more I'm going to get out of it, you know? And so the harder it got to be maybe in times, whether it was mentally or spiritually or emotionally or physically, whatever it was, I'm like, this is right where I want to be. 
I don't want to be on a couch comfortable somewhere, you know, eating Cheetos and watching TV, you know, because there's nothing there for me. So you needed some pain and some suffering. 100%. 100%. Just so you know, this happened with a couple of interviews we have. You have just screwed over the classes coming up. <laughs> you're here to help us out. Uh, tomorrow you're coming you're as a junior sure. instructor to yeah. this upcoming class so mm -hmm. i will make sure they know that you are part of the reason why they're going to get some extra special attention from me because he, he just told you the more that you suffer the more you grow the more you suffer the more you learn the more fucking pain the better growth and your transformation is going to be so we're going to bring that for you tomorrow uh, uh, as a special request from todd Telcamp here so they could thank you for that you got it if they make it to the graduation dare ceremony uh, they'll, they'll be sure to i'm sure appreciate that you awesome. give them that extra ass kicking and pain that that they're going to have so yeah really sounded like just the the harder things what were some of the ones that stand out that were more you know you said the harder they were, the more fun they were. So what were some of the ones that made it, the, you know, the, your favorite evolution? Um, geez. Um, just, you know, I think, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, like the log carry, when we carried logs up and down the, the rock trail or whatever. Um, it's just work. That's all it is, you know, and, 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 and you can't do it by yourself, no matter how kind of strong you are or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you have to lean on your teammates, and it's that exercise of, you know, you can't get in the pity party by yourself about this sucks or my shoulder hurts or this is hard and God, how much longer are we going to do this? Or are we going to do it two times, three times, whatever? You just have to be like every step at a time, breathe, you know, support and just keep moving, keep moving forward, mm -hmm. you know? And in my head, I'm like, they've got us for 75 hours, you know, <laughs> whether it's 75 hours of push ups or whether it's 75 hours of squats or carrying this or tearing that apart or moving this or whatever it is. I'm like, there's no use in bitching about it. <laughs> and you know? I know if you remember, I'm sure you do remember, I'm sure yeah. you remember all the gentlemen that quit, but I think right before that, mm -hmm. that hike that we were talking about, yep. we didn't even start it yet. We were just on the trail, on the path. Mm -hmm. And we had a, a, a candidate ring the bell right then, just yep. before it even started, before even yeah. just thinking of what it comes. That just shows how it's not even the physical. The physical is the easy part. He started negotiating with that bitch in his mm -hmm. head, started telling him stories, himself stories about how hard it's going to be. If you remember that, that was yeah. a pretty 100%. impactful moment for us, yeah. I'm sure, as, as well as you guys too, that yeah. like, what the fuck, we didn't even start yet. How could you quit before we even started this, yeah. this evolution? The lesson I learned from that evolution in that moment was what happens with most people, myself included, and this is one of those like little inner bitch games, right? Is like when you start and you're at zero before a workout or before whatever, and you're like anticipation, you're worried about the future, right? You're not here right now. And then it gets hard. And you're like, you go from zero to a hundred or whatever it is. And you think that it's just going to keep going linearly and up and up and up. And how am I going to deal with 200 or 300 or whatever it's going to be? And the reality is, is it kind of levels off. You know, and if you go from zero to 100 and you think, God, how am I going to handle that trajectory? That's why people quit, because they think it's going to get to a thousand and two thousand. Mm -hmm. How am I ever going to do that? It's probably going to even out <laughs> at some point, you know, um, and you just got to just deal with it and get through it and breathe and support and be present and just work your ass off. And that's how it works. And it, you know? was, it was just a bullshit story. He was telling his head about 100%. how hard this is going to be. It didn't even happen yet. It yep. could have been easy yep. you know, for all he knows. He doesn't know how hard it was going to be. And yeah. And then I remember he really fucked you guys over because now you had an extra man's worth of gear you had to carry that it was impossible. It took us something that was supposed to take like an hour, yeah. hour and a half. We were there for like three and a half, four hours with that yeah. because you had to take all this extra gear. And yeah. then I think because of that fact that it, 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 he pissed me off, I think we even took extra stuff that you weren't even supposed to take. I think we added some more on top Probably. of that <laughs> just to add to the fun because sure. I, don't want you to, I don't want you to feel like you're missing out. I want to give you the best benefit, the most value for your money mm -hmm. and make sure you're having the most Pain equals growth, right? That's what it's 100%. all about. So yep. that's that's awesome stuff. Yeah. So what was it in in those times that that were getting hard that made yourself, you know, that 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 trigger, that button that made you not quit? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're not. The, everyone says I'm not the type to quit, but every man at some point, I mean, myself included, there it, you have that shadow of doubt, like. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm done. What was the trigger for you that made you not even consider that? Yeah. I mean, it was, it, it, yeah, I got to keep things simple. <laughs> you know, I can't make it complex. And the, and the goal was finish. That's it. Mm -hmm. The goal is finish, right? And how do I finish? Be present, work your ass off and be positive and help others out. Like that mantra, those four things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I told the class before we started, I'm like, guys, you know, I've kind of sort of been through these before a little bit, but like, keep these things in mind, you know, just breathe. Like if you're breathing, you're alive and you're good to go. <laughs> so know? simple, right? Like yeah. so simple. Don't make it, don't make it complex. Just breathe, be positive and help others out and work your butt off. That's it. So kind of when in doubt, focus out. Don't focus on yourself and how much it sucks for you. It for makes sure. it so much easier thinking yeah. about being part of the fucking team and helping someone, someone else yeah, out. Absolutely. Knowing that probably 
they might be struggling more than you, having a harder time yeah. than you, and you can actually help them get through this. Mm-hmm. That, that's good stuff. And yeah. just breathe. How, how easy is that, right? Yeah, how sure. easy? You're breathing. <laughs> Appreciate the fact you're breathing and just fucking breathe. Like, yeah. so simple. And people make shit so complex and so hard and make easy shit difficult. Mm-hmm. Like, all you had to do is walk carrying some shit. Think yeah, about it. Walking it. through the park. That's it. It's fucking a privilege. Yeah. It's a privilege. Like, you should be like, thank God I get to walk through this park yeah. carrying this shit up this hill. Like, life doesn't get any fucking better. Well, maybe it could get better if there was some... Hot chicks there with us doing or something. Maybe then it could be, but other than that, yeah. it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, so that's, absolutely. That's, that's awesome stuff. What was your some of your least least favorite things that that occurred? Um, you know, we had obviously there was a lot of things that happened during that project. Um, it, it, but the same thing goes. Like I didn't judge it. Like it was just what it was. You know, my, and whether it was seventy five hours of push ups, I didn't care. Like I'll, you know, it's gonna suck. So your most favorite and your least favorite are almost the, the same, same thing. thing. Yeah, that's, and, that's and matter of fact, awesome. the, the least favorite was even better because that's where that challenge is, right? Um, the more it sucked, I mean, it sucks. Like sucking sucks. Like it's not comfortable. You know? Sucking sucked. You learned that here today on the project show. Sucking fucking sucks. Yeah, I learned that. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's right where and what I tell people is like right where it's the most uncomfortable. That's the door to you being a better version of yourself. Right, and you're never going to get to that other room where you're your better version of yourself if you don't deal with that discomfort. It might be emotional discomfort in a challenging conversation with somebody in your life. It might be a challenging work situation. It might be a challenging physical situation. But the better you is on the other side of that door. You just need to persevere. So every, pretty much every single evolution, what I'm hearing you saying, every evolution was as bad as it can get. It sucks. I hate this so much, and that's exactly why I love this so much. Like. Mm-hmm. They're both the same of you, and I haven't heard that from that perspective. That's that's yeah, some, that's some good stuff. Yeah. That your least favorite and your and and your most favorite are the same exact thing. That, yeah. That's awesome stuff. So, when it comes to obviously there was some suffering there because we're human or semi-human, right? Yeah, right. So it, it's hard. It's hard shit. Although sure. it's fun and we make the most of it, we have that positive mindset. Shit is fucking hard. It's mm-hmm. it's hard shit. It's suffering. It's painful. What were some of the things that you went through the suffering and maybe at the time you kind of had those things like, wow, this sucks. Can't wait for this is over. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards you're looking back, you're like, you know what? That was, that was fucking fun. And maybe some funny moments or things like that. What are some things that stand like that for you that after the fact you're like, that was some good shit. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, the, there was, it was the same lesson that happened twice within probably, I don't know, I, you don't keep track of time during that stuff, but, but, you know, within a couple of hours of each other and, you know, the first was after the log carry that we'd carried those logs and all that stuff for God, whatever it was, two or three hours. And we got back and we loaded everything in the truck, got it all nice and pretty and everything like that. And then Bedros pulls us aside and says, you know, basically like, why don't you guys, isn't it kind of curious that Steve wears two different color shoes? And isn't that weird? And I, I chimed in and I said, guys, like this is a total distraction. Like it's totally not important to the goal, which is finish. Like mm-hmm. it's a total distraction. And I, you know, no, I could care less. Don't even, don't go ask him that crap. <laughs> and then people start percolating up and like, yeah, I'm really curious about what's going on with that. I'm like, guys, it's a distraction. And basically the group voted to go ask you like why you wore two different so colors. had this conversation? Like- yeah, yeah, yeah. Bader's pulled this aside and kind of spun it up. And and I was like, and I put my two cents in. Everybody voted. I kind of got outvoted. And I'm like. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you actually did actually tell them that. You weren't I think just I thinking that. Fir- I was the first one, I think, that, that chimed in. And I put my opinion in the mm-hmm. hat. And then everybody kind of outvoted me. And then somebody went and said, Steve, you know, why do you got inter- interrupted you, I think, as I, as I recall, and said, why are you wearing two different color shoes? And you did your thing. And basically, How you're like, rude. How rude. Yeah. I'm sure that didn't end too well. I'm sure. Well, I don't even remember. Yeah, it was, I kind of black out during those 75 hours. I don't really know yeah. too much what's going yeah. on. But there was there was some punishment that, that was going to come. And, uh, you know, the lesson was figure out what you believe and fucking die for it. <laughs> you know, don't just, mm-hmm. hey, here's what I think, and that's that, you know? Um, and so I learned that lesson, and I think as we did some pays to be a winner games, mm-hmm. and my team just happened to win, um, and we get back to the, the compound, and, uh, you know, at some point, Bedros was like, pulls us, the winning team aside, and he gets us out some lawn chairs, and orders some pizza, and some nice cold water, puts us fucking in the Fucking Papa Bear, when I'm not around, <laughs> fucking Papa Bear, this is what goes on when I'm not around. And the, the losing team got to do PT in the sun, and water in their face, and they're doing sit-ups, and flutter kicks, and push-ups, and whatever it was they're doing, and we're, you know, being enticed to be nice and comfortable, right? While the other half of our team is suffering and paying mm-hmm. the price for not being the winner. And and something didn't feel right to me, but you know, it's Pedro's. Pedro's is like, here guys, you, you guys have earned this, right? And sucking, you know, pulling us into like being comfortable, right? Mm-hmm. And then for whatever reason, you know, God dictated, you're like, I need to get back there. And you went back there and just taught us the lesson. Cause that was a time <laughs> I was actually, we left the park 
and I was going to take care of a couple other things for those few minutes, and then yeah. we were meeting back at the compound. Yeah. And so I w- you were getting there ahead of me, and I was driving. I don't remember what I was going to do, and I didn't even go and complete the task I was doing. I said, it was my, I don't know, the, the devilish, spidey senses went off. I fucking flipped a U-turn. I flew back, like ran through a red light to get back. I was like, something is off here. Something is off here. And I get back and you motherfuckers are sitting there eating pizza. And that was not a setup or a trap. Like he was genuinely trying to let the winners win yep. and the losers suffer because he knew that I, he like set me off on some task. I forget what it was I had to go in and do. Yeah. And that was like genuinely, he was trying to let you have some pizza and, and enjoy the time. Yep. And I remember walking in. And I looked at him, and I don't get, I, I don't, I don't even remember what happened. I don't even know, know what happened from there, and it doesn't matter. But yeah, it it, it, it didn't end well. I, I know that. I know more. No more pizza was eaten from nope. that moment on. Nope. I know that. Yeah. So the lesson, the same lesson, right? Like figure out what's right to you, and like die for it, and like make sure that you know you're living your life in alignment with what you think is important. So two lessons, same lesson, two different times within two hours, and that was just you know one or two hours of seventy five. You feel like you could have pushed pushed it a little harder. Your 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 point of oh, view for sure. Like, guys, we're here. We are here as a team. We are not divided. Right. We're here. And what I would have liked to have done and what I will do moving forward is like in those situations where I know that something is happening and I have the ability to um, share my opinion and really like, hey, this is what I believe in. Mm-hmm. You know, I won't cave down if I feel like that's what's right. And so although you learn the lesson, you think back like not, I'm not going to say you regret it because you did learn a lesson. out 100%. of it, But going back, you could you felt like you could have definitely pushed a lot more into it. And that's 100%. a huge lesson, I'm sure. Yeah. In life since then, yeah. Like let's let's talk about that. What are some immediate, tangible or even intangible things that have happened since? Like day one, you're mm-hmm. back home from the project. What are some ways that you can implement the things you learned like right away? Some things are going to take more time to really, you know, uh, cultivate. But yeah. what what would things really impacted you right away? And that sounds like one of them right there. Yeah, like for sure. realizing to hold your ground a little more and speak up a little louder and a yeah. little stronger. Mm-hmm. And, and and during the project, I'll tell you, we've had there's been some. I don't think your class, there have been some heated like discussions like that, like literally to the point of like ready to throw blows. And yeah, I'm like, I'm all for it. I'm like, right, do what you got to do. Yeah. We'll, we'll turn it back. Do what you got to do. Like, yeah. it, it, and because it is, you, you need to hold your ground and, and the other person might be thinking the same thing. So mm-hmm. what are some of the things other than that, or maybe even that situations in, in the immediate you know, immediate life after sure. graduating that you were able to implement. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the biggest things um, that just translated without me even trying or thinking about or reflection or anything like that is just like how much, how little things bother me that used to bother me before. And mm-hmm. going back into my job, you know, in a leadership role with a team um, and, you know, some weird things that might happen in business or customers or, you know, HR kind of like personal issues. Mm-hmm. And I would, it doesn't even, as I say, it doesn't, even, I don't even give it an extra heartbeat. My pulse hasn't even changed when it's other things, other people are getting spun up because somebody's doing something that's going to screw our work up and this and this. I'm able to like just sit there and stay pretty stoic and, you know, neutral, right? And and go, here's what's going on. This person's pissed. This is what's happening. What we need to do is stay the course or support this person or whatever it might be and just look at it objectively. And it allowed me to become a better leader because what would have spun me up before and got me all emotionally riled up, I can't even see the problem and help solve it. Um, but through all that, you know, 75 hours of hardship and, and, and working together as a team and through all those different challenges, when you go back out in the real world and you deal with these little piddly issues, mm-hmm. like it's so much easier to deal with. And now you're saying that you're reminding me of, and I'm sure you remember this, this situation. And it was part of, I mean, all the instructors, but I remember specifically pointing you out. If you remember before we got on the bus to go, to go play volleyball and play the beach games we played, you know, we're going to have a good old time at the beach with the beers and, sure. you know, the yeah. bikinis that was and the all best that. Part. <laughs> right before we got on the bus for that, I don't know if you remember, I don't remember which instructor took you aside to have a talk with you because mm-hmm. we're watching you throughout the entire process, mm-hmm. you know, making sure obviously physically and medically everything's good, but also mentally and emotionally. Like if we, yep. s- sometimes we'll see, you know, guys that are kind of checking out, like mm-hmm. it's, it's a little too much and overwhelming and we'll have to like take them aside and maybe send them home because it's yeah. just too much for them. So I remember we were, this was about two and a half days in going into almost mm-hmm. the last day. And I remember seeing you. And I took the other instructors aside and I said, we need to have a talk with him. He, he looks mm-hmm. like he's checking out. And yeah. I, I I saw you and I think they took you aside and someone talked to you right before you got on the bus and yeah. asked if everything's okay. Yeah. How are you dealing with, like, how's everything going? Mm-hmm. But it, and now we're talking about it now and you, you explained it to them there and, and they, it was a, it was suitable. The, the conversation went well and you mm-hmm. continued on and obviously you kicked ass and yeah. you graduated. But now that you're explaining it now, it, I see what it was. Like you were that middle of the line. Like I remember seeing you like, what is wrong with this motherfucker? Like, 
we're putting you through so much shit and you were just like stoic is the word like, you yeah. know stoic and i studied stoic philosophy yep. pretty deeply mm -hmm. and that's exactly where you were you were in that zone you flipped that switch and you were in that zone and, and to the outside eyes it looked like you were almost losing it and we just had to make sure that you're all good but it was because you were just in the fucking zone in the middle and, and it reminds me of in the marine corps when i was in boot camp mm -hmm. we're like two months into this thing and and they're torturing us and the drill instructor had to take me into his office. Exact same situation before he got on the bus. And that's why I told him to take you aside and make sure you're good. And yeah, he, yeah. he takes me in. He's like, Eckert, what's your deal? He's like, we are throwing everything at you. We're fucking hammering you. Yeah. But you just keep doing this stuff with a smile on your face. Like, what the fuck is your deal? Mm -hmm. I was like, I I'm in heaven. I'm in fucking heaven. You, get, you give me three square meals a day. You're yelling at me. You're, you're yelling at me all day. You're also giving me a paycheck. I get to work out. I get to shoot guns, throw grenades. Like, what more can I ask yeah. for? At home? I got yelled at all the time. <laughs> no one fed me. I didn't get paid. Everyone fucking hated me. Yeah. I'm in heaven. He's like, just, just get the fuck out of my face. Just go back out there and do <laughs> right. it. And that's the, the zone that you were in. And I recognize that now. And I saw that after the fact. But yeah. that, that's just awesome that, that, that you're able to get into that, that level. That's some good stuff yeah. right there. No use in making it harder than it needs to be. Yeah. Good, yeah. good stuff. So then what, what other successes now? Long term, after the fact, you're now a few months mm -hmm. out from graduating. What are some things that have come up after that you, you realize, you know, this is like, aha, this is why we did things a certain way. And this is now affecting maybe your decision making, your, your feedback. Given some. What are some successes or impacts you've had since then that, that have helped you? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the big things is just, uh, you know, like it really helped me kind of propel me into, you know, just not giving a crap what people think about me, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's not my job to, you know, put on a mask and, you know, be this way with this group of people and be this way with this relationship or whatever it is, because, you know, nobody can connect to somebody that's fake, mm -hmm. you know, and it really, that 75 hours gave me another opportunity to practice, like, you know, A, see who I am with all the BS removed, all the comforts and all the, you know, all the games we play mm -hmm. in the normal world or whatever. And I'm like, oh, this is who I am. That's right. I remember this, you know, and uh, to not give a crap what people think. And so to go back out and just my goal every day is to be as honest and transparent as I can be with myself about who I am and what I need and what I want. And then express that to the people in my life, you know, whether it's business relationships or family or whatever it is. And if that means that some relationships have to go away and some jobs have to change or whatever it is, then that's it is what it is, you know. Um, but that's allowed me to have better connections with my family, with my friends, with my relationships, with people I work with, um, because they know who I am, because that's all that I'm sharing, mm -hmm. you know. And probably get rid of some of the people that didn't belong in your life. You probably maybe you realize that. I call it taking out the trash. Yeah, like for sure. Eliminating those people from your life. Did you have you done that since you graduated the project? Had definitely, definitely people? a little bit for sure. And I, I, you know, and to me, it's more about boundaries. It's not about removing. It's about mm -hmm. like, hey, here's my boundary. And if you leave, then it is what it is. If you stay and you change, or you realize that, you know, maybe. You know, you see something that I'm doing, you're like, wow, Todd's really happy and he's doing some things that, you know, really mean something to him and he's putting it out there what what he wants and where his boundaries are. And, and wow, I want to do that, too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe the people in your life that you think you're going to lose by putting those boundaries down, they're going to see that, oh, wow, he's really standing up for himself. And that's what it looks like to put your boundaries down and to say what's important to you. Mm -hmm. And that might inspire them to do the same thing for themselves. So. So you came to the discovery, it sounds like, during the project, and I want to know how that happened. But first, to become yourself, who you used to be or who you wanted to be, and mm -hmm. not give a fuck what anyone thinks. Sure. I think you said not give a, a damn, but I'm saying the way he meant to say it is right. not give a fuck what anyone thinks about you. Yeah, 100%. Because what that's going to do is attract the people that are really your people, your yep. tribe, yep. and repel the people who aren't that. Because if you're if you're being something else, right, you're going to attract yep. the wrong people, and now you're going to be miserable in your business and your personal relationship. Yep. So just put it out there. Like, yeah. this is my freak flag. This is who I am. This is what I stand for. Yep. If you don't like it, perfect. Just go that way, go somewhere else. Yeah. But the people that can accept that, now yeah. you're like, you're getting rid of all that bullshit and all that drama 100%. in between. So what was it about the project then that kind of helped you rediscover that about yourself? How did that end up happening? You know, it's just, like I said, it's, it's 75 hours of really like, you know, you don't, your creature comforts are gone. You have to like be who you are because all that stuff, you don't have time to, to worry about any of anything else other than, you and what you can bring to the table, especially in that team environment. Like I might be really good at A, B, and C, but suck at D and F, whatever mm -hmm. those things are. And you're like, oh, my buddy over here is really good at D and E, and my other buddy over here is really good at F. And together, we're a full fucking alphabet. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not the full alphabet. That's awesome. And the only way that, you know, we're going to get through this is for us all to realize what we're good at and what we're not good at. And let's work together to up level everything. Good stuff. Yeah. One yeah. of my staff sergeants told me in the Marine Corps, he said, none of us, I'll probably fight. None of us are smarter than all of us. Yeah. So that's what you're saying. That, yeah. That's good stuff. Definitely. And, and, it, and it tells you a lot about yourself. You discover a lot about yourself in that way and remember about who you are because there's eliminating all the bullshit around you. Like mm -hmm. we have a task at hand. Mission accomplishment is the number one thing over my own welfare mm -hmm. is mission accomplishment. So that, that's good stuff. Yeah. So what what is it? meant to you to become part of this brotherhood this as you see this is not just a high five and a t-shirt and you go on your way after it's done yeah. like maybe some races or mud runs and other bullshit like that how is the, the the being part of this lifelong brotherhood how has that affected you impacted you just in your life since then yeah so it's uh it's a continuation of kind of that you know alphabet i guess if you want to call it that it's like everybody's good at something and everybody needs support somewhere right and the fact that we're all in this brotherhood and what are we at now 50 40 something like that mm -hmm. um and more to come um and and everybody's bringing their best selves to it right and 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 you know certainly the stuff that you share and other people share it like inspires me like oh yeah i should be doing that too that's that's really cool or you know i share something and somebody else says oh that's really cool too i'm gonna up level my game you mm -hmm. know and you know we're throwing challenges out there like one of the guys that i graduated with we're zoom calling after the project and he's like, I'm thinking about doing this 130 mile bike ride. And I'm like, damn it, I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah, we're doing it. I'm doing it with my son and we're right. doing it it's on our regular bikes. We're not getting those fancy bikes to do all the riding for you. We're yeah. going to do it. And it's going to probably take us, I don't even know, 18 hours, but we're going to fucking do it. Yeah. So just we're all those kinds you. of things. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have ridden, you know, 130 miles on a bike. I mean, I probably would have, but, um, you know, it was just something that somebody threw out, you know, that's a brother of mine. And I'm like, dude, the thought of doing something that's hard with somebody that's a brother of mine, like I'm down, like where, where and when, well, let's sign me up. That's you know? awesome. So all awesome. kinds of stuff like that. So awesome stuff. Is that something you feel like was lacking in your life beforehand? Having that like that that group of men who can uplift and inspire you, but also looking to uplift you, but also that you can contribute to and no one I think the real the real value, the real beauty of it is that no one's looking for anything in return, right? Sure. Looking to Absolutely. help each other out, lift each other up. How can I help yeah. you? And expecting nothing, you're not even crossing their mind of what am I going to get back in return? Yeah, 100%. Is that, is that something that you feel was kind of lacking beforehand? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I had friends and stuff that, you know, I'll do workouts with and you kind of get that a little bit um, where they will do some crazy stuff with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, but there's, you know, it when you when you go through the project or something like that with somebody like it's relatively extreme, and you know that, like, if I have a buddy that... Did you call the project relatively extreme? Yeah, it's relatively extreme, right? <laughs> and every interview that we've done, the wh whoever's been sitting in that chair has just royally fucked over the upcoming class, and you just did it for them again. It's relatively extreme. Do you hear that? Class 006 coming up tomorrow that he's going to be there with you again. You're all fucked, because it was just relatively extreme. That's it. Prepare for a little more, a slight smidgen above relatively extreme starting tomorrow. I'll bring that to you. I'll be sure to deliver that for you. You're welcome. Right. Yes. <laughs> you, you, just, you just keep fucking them over left and right. But if but if my buddy in New York says, hey, I need, you know, help doing X, Y, Z and I got nobody else. Can you help me out? You, you, where and when? <laughs> you know what I mean? Actually, one of the, the graduates yeah. from your class. Like, yeah. think about this. We, we're out there, right? We're doing the thing. We're the instructors and you're hating us a little bit at the time. And yeah. and. Uh, Costal, yep. sure he was hating me at the time. He he was in fear the whole time, and literally like two or three weeks after mm -hmm. graduation, he takes his truck from Florida, drives it all the way up to New York, meets me in New York yeah. to unload gym equipment. He got there a day early actually, and so I had no one to help us. Me, my nine-year-old son, and him. Yeah, and he's there just to move to drive the truck. Not yeah. a movie. He's not a moving company. Yeah, he helped us by hand move an entire gym into his truck. Yeah. Then he drove it across the country three days later and just me, him, and now my son and wife by hand put all this up. And it's a, you know, a huge 18 wheeler truck that doesn't have a lift or anything like that yeah. he doesn't do the moving. He has the, the, the machines or the people that put it yeah. all in there. So he went above and beyond. This is just weeks after it, like connections like mm -hmm. that, like it's, it's powerful and it's priceless. 100%. And yeah. he's at my house having breakfast, like three weeks after just finishing the project and yeah hating me minutes ago and I was at my house having fucking breakfast with my family like crazy stuff it's like wow it even blows my mind I'm sure he's probably sitting there like how the fuck did I get in this guy's house eating breakfast when yeah. I wanted him to, like I wanted to kill him a few <laughs> weeks ago and there we are like like brothers like family like we knew each other forever like it's it's fucking priceless yeah. it's, it's a powerful it's good thing stuff. it really is awesome so what would you say to someone in your position that or even maybe even a little more 
skeptical or hesitant to, to join. You were pretty much on board. You had a couple little things you were thinking about. Mm -hmm. But someone that's having hesitations about their spouse is not going to be on board with it or it's too expensive or it's just going to be too hard. They can't do it. Just doubting themselves. What's something you would say to someone like that that's kind of considering getting on board with the project? Yeah. So, you know, one of the big lessons that I took away from the project and kind of life in general is like, you know, one of the things I've got rid on my you know, mirror in my bathroom is like, you know, find what is important to me and what, what's in my heart and just live from that. You know, and to me, like my heart connected to the project and that kind of challenge and that kind of brotherhood. Right. And you can always find fear. You can always find doubt. You can always do those things. And it really it's up to you. Like, what do you want to amplify? Do you want to amplify your passion and what's important to you? Or do you want to go, well, that could be hard and that could be this and that could be that. I mean, there is an infinite number of those things out there. All fear is, is, is really excuses there. Every fear that someone pulls is just another excuse. They're yeah. just not willing to do it. They're for sure. They're willing, yeah. they're willing to just stay where they are in a life of mediocrity. Yeah. And if you throw, you know, fuel on that fire, it's going to grow. That fear is going to grow. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they're probably at this point now is because they are drawn to doing it. But they've repeated that habit of like amplifying the fear and what if this person and what if I, you know, this happens to me and what if, what is this person going to think? And this person thinks it's a bad idea and you're, you know, you're crazy if you do that kind of stuff. Well, guess what? If you live your life based on everybody else's fears, you're just going to be sitting in the corner of your bedroom, you know, crying the rest of your life, mm -hmm. you know, connect to what is, you know, your passion is and screw all the fears and just lean into it. And as you guys, you know, say like attack the hill get after it, you know, mm -hmm. figure if that's what you want to do, get after it as hard as you can. And it sounds so easy to live a life of mediocrity or being average, right? It, that choosing the easy route leads to an average life. Sounds easy. Yep. But when it comes down to it, that type of life is fucking 10 times harder than a life of savagery and excellence yeah. and, you know, extraordinary. It's yeah. so much easier of a life than what seems easy. The easy route leads yeah. to a hard life. Yeah. A hard route leads to an easy life, if that, yeah. if that makes sense. Lean, that's what, lean, like what you're lean saying. into the hard stuff, you know, if the, the harder, the better. Awesome. You know? So I always like to finish with this. What are two or three pieces of advice you'd have for now? So the men that got over those hesitations are actually registered. They mm -hmm. just have an upcoming class. Like you're here to help out with the class tomorrow. Yep. I don't know if you know it, but we have a candidate tomorrow in the class. I was actually in your class yep. that rang the bell yep. and he's coming back for a, a story yeah. of redemption. What a, what a crazy story that is. And, and, dynamic that is that you're now here to be a junior instructor with someone in the class that was in your group that rang the bell and left and did maze end and now he's back in the class like yeah. huge storyline right there so yeah what are some pieces of advice you'd have to him to the other candidates in this group tomorrow and just any of the the viewers out there that have are already registered in an upcoming class what are two or three pieces of advice you'd have for them leading up until their class comes yeah. up yeah so three things would be just be present and breathe right because you if you can breathe you're good like so breathe, right? Um, be positive, right? In, in that same equation of like, you know, are you afraid of the challenge of the project or are you really inspired to like participate and, and be involved in that, you know? So be positive. There's always, if you're breathing, there's something to be positive about. Hey, we're in Southern California. It's the sun's out. Like we just had dinner or we will have food at some point, it's right? Privilege. You know, it, it is like be positive. And those positive moments are always there. Always, 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 right? So, you know, breathe, be present, be positive, and learn to practice ways to be grateful and, and help other people, right? And if you do those things, keep it simple, the next thing you know, it'll be over with, and you'll graduate. Such easy piece of advice right there, and, and those things, not just to help you with going to the project, just any viewers out there, men, shit, even women in general, with those three points alone, those are fucking golden nuggets that will lead you to success in any area of life, not just in the project. This we're talking about in life in general, in all areas, personally, professionally. So that's awesome stuff for appreciate yeah. sharing that. Yeah. And I want to thank you for coming out here. Looking forward to, to working with you Me tomorrow too. and, and make it happen for these guys. So yeah. thanks for coming out. Thanks, awesome Steve. job. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Great thank to you. see you. So men, this, listen up. This is what it's all about. This is about having meaningful transformations, going through the suffering and the sacrifice because no great success in any area of life ever happens without some pain, without some suffering, without some sacrifice. And that's what the project is all about. So I hope you got something out of this episode. If you have gotten even one little tiny tidbit of a golden nugget that's going to help you out, just give me a comment down below about what has actually helped you from this episode in your life. Give a like and make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of these episodes that we're pumping out on a regular basis of the project. It's all about killing the inner bitch and unleashing the beast so you can be a better husband, a better father, a better leader, a better entrepreneur, and a better man. 
I will talk to you later. You are freaking awesome. No excuses.